Hello everyone, this is David, and tonight we're doing something a little bit different, still in the same vein as the movies we've been looking at before, but tonight we're going to start what will more or less be a series of things, uh, a series of movies that kind of follow a similar theme, and that is When Nature Attacks. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it's more... It's more akin to Animal on the Loose or uh, on a Rampage, which became more popular as uh, giant monsters kind of fell out of uh, interest. So the allegory for nuclear weapons, it's now, we're now up into like the 70s and 80s, and the allegory for nuclear weapons is kind of getting old at this point. Um, nuclear act, uh, activists have been active for many years and World War II is now quite a bit in the past so the only live detonations of nuclear weapons are quite far removed not not terribly far but far enough where there's a new generation that's grown up to at least in, be in their you know like teens and 20s um, which either had very little or nothing to do with that sort of thing. Like they, they weren't alive at the time, or if they were, they were so young they don't remember. Well, new movies to cater to them. And these ones tend to usually have a similar environmental message, but it's usually more of a don't pollute the environment, which is akin to what's today tonight's movie is about. Tonight's movie, Empire of the Ants. Now, let's talk about this for a minute. There's been a few movies from this kind of era that are similar in this vein, where they have ants attacking, or some similar such insect. The original was the movie Them, which was very good, uh, about giant ants um, that were mutated by radiation, unsurprisingly, to giant sizes. Uh, this is a similar take on it, but this takes place in Florida, in, as opposed to in the... Um, in the, I believe it was Texas, but somewhere out there in the desert. It might have been Arizona. Yeah, I think it was Arizona. It was where the nuclear tests were taking place, I believe. Um, so, Empire of the Ants instead takes place in Florida. And let's talk about the ants for a minute. So, first of all, the ants are giant. Now, that's kind of understood, but there are some movies that have normal-sized ants that are fighting you. Now, the movie that stands out in my mind is a movie called Phase 4. Phase 4 is a very strange movie about ants, but as opposed to being giant or poisonous or anything like that, they're actually sentient ants, and they're actually quite a bit smarter than people, and they build all these elaborate structures and whatnot. And it's a very strange and interesting movie, and I recommend watching it if you like the more bizarre or weird things, but today's movie is uh, substantially less complicated. It's Empire of the Ants. So... Uh, Really, the ants don't have anything special or really all that interesting about them. They're just giant ants. Oh, wait, there is one interesting thing. The ants, the ant queen specifically, can control you with her pheromones. So she sprays you with pheromones, and now you're under her sway, and basically like her mind slave. It's kind of an interesting take on it. Um, I don't know how the ants adapted to doing that to humans, because... I don't know. I don't know. I guess they just mutated it. So anyway, let's get to the story. So, quite simply, this is going to be a relatively short one. Uh, so there's this... There's these people dump toxic waste in Florida, off the coast of Florida. And long story short, the toxic waste ends up on the shore. Ants get into the toxic waste. Shenanigans begins. Okay, so these these shyster con artists are trying to sell these gullible like gullible people property that they're saying they're going to develop, but they're really not, and they're taking all these people out there. And there's a there's a bunch of different get people. There's like an old couple who only comes in these things because it's like they get like free food and whatnot, and they just like to travel around and just see that kind of stuff. And then, you know, on there's like a rogues gallery of different individuals. Some are interested in buying things, some are not just there for like the afternoon and they're this woman's trying to sell them the stuff she's like the head shysta and she's trying to sell them the property and a lot of people aren't buying it or are just there for the food or whatnot and then some people go missing some of the the helpers go missing and then this guy they were looking for the helpers and then this guy goes and he's trying to figure out 
if this is all staged or if they're legitimately going to be developing this area. And he pulls up some stuff and he sees it's just like, it's just stuff they plant in the ground, like some, uh, like a fire hydrant and some like, um, I think some like ventilation stuff for like, uh, sewage or not sewage, but like, uh, that kind of stuff, you know, like piping and whatnot. He pulls it up. And he's like, this is just stuck in the ground. It isn't really there. So he's like, they're not planning on doing anything. It looks like, so then they get attacked by the ants. And this is the first time you really see them. You saw what I like to call Monster Vision, which was uh, interesting. This version of Monster Vision is um, a thing. It's <laughs> It basically is like ant vision. So what if you, if you could imagine sectioning the image into like 16 or 20 different little octagons and then like replicating it across the screen, that's what ant vision looks like. Now, I've never been an ant before. But I'm pretty sure the insect compound eye processes that differently than we assume. I'm pretty sure it doesn't see 16 different images of the same thing. Pretty sure. Uh, maybe it does, but I don't think that's the way that works. Anyway, so that, that's what this movie's interpretation of the monster vision is. And if you don't know what monster vision is, it's pretty self-explanatory. It is any time in a movie where you see through the monster's eyes. Now, this can be a varying number of effects, and in this case, it's kind of like splitting up the screen a bunch of times. Uh, I've seen green green monster vision, I've seen red monster vision, I've seen fake infrared monster vision, I've seen real infrared monster vision, I've seen like hyper-stylized monster vision, I've seen fisheye lens monster vision. It, it runs the gambit, so it goes all over the place and back again. Um, I think even in like what is it? I remember seeing a sound monster vision once, which was kind of weird, but you know, all over the place. So the ants basically start attacking people and the people start freaking out and they're running and the ants get on the boat and they wreck the boat that they took to get there. So they're like, well, what can we do? Well, let's go to the rec center. And they're like, no, no, we can't go to the rec center. Let's go to this thing. And then while they're debating, they're surrounded by ants and they get a fire going and the fire scares off the ants because, you know, they have some like fire, apparently. And then a rainstorm kicks up. And being in Florida, that's not too surprising. Rainstorms kick up every afternoon if it's the right time of year. So they're looking to get away. And what ends up happening is a couple of them run to... Uh, this old couple runs off by themselves, and they end up hiding out in this, like, house in the woods. And then, like, a bunch of other people run off in a different direction. And they find this boat, and they start going up this river. It kind of meanders throughout, and the ants are chasing them the whole way. The old couple gets killed by the ants, unsurprisingly. Uh, and they get to this... They, they figure out that the ants are hurting them in a direction for some reason, which seems strange to them. They're like, why would the ants hurt us? But they figure it out, because they're not attacking. They're just sort of guiding them in a direction. Where it, Whenever they go somewhere away, the ants don't want them to go. There's tons of ants in their path that just kind of pop up. So, they, they get to this town, and everything seems fine and dandy, and they're like, oh man, you won't believe this, but we got attacked by a bunch of giant ants. And the mayor's like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, um, we'll look into that. And the sheriff's all like, yeah, we'll we'll get right on that. And the mayor's like, you know what, just, uh, you know, we'll set you up here and uh, get you all set, and we'll get you on your way in a couple days, once you're better, you know, once, you get, once you're good. Well, they get suspicious, because they're like, this is too too good. They see, like, the police said they were going out, but then, like, the police don't leave. They just go back to, like, their office. And, you know, like, they're, they're pretty suspicious of everything going on. They try to rent a car. The, the the renter place is like, we need IDs. They're like, we could talk to the mayor. They're like, that's not gonna work. They try to call on the phone. The phones are down, but the mayor was talking to someone on the phone. So, like, this is really weird. Also, there's a giant sugar plant in this com in this place, and the mayor is ordering more sugar to be brought in by truck. So that's a little weird. So they try to escape. The police basically corner them. They bring them back to this place, and it turns out that the ant queen has possessed all the people effectively. They're all under the ant queen's sway, and she brings them in every week, one by one, and sprays them with this pheromone to keep them in line. And all of them serve the, the Ant Queen's interests. And that's basically making more ants and feeding her call. Okay. So, she's doing that. And all the, all, the player, uh, all the guys freak out. And they run off. 
they, they like punch guy out, run off, and all get some people get captured again. And what ends up happening is they end up. Uh, I believe they send a guy in to go get uh, hit with the pheromone, and he just lights up the ant queen. He has like a flare, and he just lights her up, and that burns down the place, and everyone kind of goes nuts, like you do whenever your possession snaps for a second, and then. And then that's pretty much it. They get back on their boat and they run away. And they killed the ants in theory. And that's the movie. It's pretty short. It's not particularly good. I don't really recommend this one. Although it was directed by Burt I. Gordon. And if you're not familiar with Burt I. Gordon, he his initials stand for big, as you might have heard or looked at. And he specializes in this sort of thing. Either someone being really small and dealing with really big things or really big things that should be really small. I forget all of his movies, but I'm pretty sure he's done, like, The Colossal Man, or, like, anything where there's, like, a big monster that's just, like, it's supposed to be a small thing running around. It's probably Bird Eye Gordon. And he does a lot of rear projection in his things, where it's, like, the action is... The the characters, the human characters are in the front foreground, and they're projecting the image of whatever it is that's coming after them into the background, which gives the actor something to play off of. It's not just like they're swinging at nothing, but... I mean, it... It's okay. Like, the special effects in this movie are done moderately okay, and the real issue I have with it is, again, it's rear projected for the most part. They use real ants for the, the rear projection and whatnot, so that looks good, but the problem comes down to if any of the people have to actually physically interact with one. Now, the problem is the... I don't want to say costumes, but like the ants that they got, that they ha their prop department made, look kind of sketchy. The, I get the impression that they didn't have a full ant body, or if they did, it certainly wasn't capable of any sort of real, like, movement on its own. So what you get is a lot of ant heads, or, like, legs, or antenna kind of coming at you, and it's and they always come from a just off-screen or from a perspective shot, so that's a problem. It looks very cheaply done. And for what it's worth, though, the special effects are okay in that regard, but again, that's what you get. Like, you know, with movies like this, you're not expecting huge budgets and super special effects. It's the 70s. They're doing what they can. This is long before CGI. This is... I mean, but then again, if they had a budget, I don't know if this story really holds up. It's it's just about some shady real, realtors trying to sell some stuff, and then, nope, there's, there's giant ants. I mean, this story's been done far better in the movie Them. And in fact, as opposed to recommending this movie, I'd, I'd actually say, just stay away from this particular one. It's kind of boring, and not a lot happens. But I would recommend the movie Them. Check it out. It's in black and white, so if you don't like black and white, that's a problem. But uh, I grew up on movies like that, so I'm fine with it. Uh, it's a good movie. The special effects are a little cheesier, but then again, it was done like 20 years before this. And uh, it's pretty good, all things considered. It's American production. You should be able to find it. All right, folks. Good night.